sponsored by Dow Infinity. Welcome to the latest episode of Thinking Tackle. I'm Ali Hamidi and over the next six days, teams from Germany, Benelux and England will be battling it out to become the first ever Gigantica Lake European Carp Cup champion. This lake is home to some absolutely monstrous carp and we'll be covering the baits, the methods and the tactics they use to hopefully put a few in the landing net. I can't wait. This is the Gigantica Lake European Carp Cup. Team. Firstly, from Benelux, the captain, Ian Overbegier. He's an angling writer and editor. He's experienced on a number of venues on the continent and caught some massive carp to boot. They'll need every ounce of his ability to make an impact on this match. Next up, Bart Voiton, the big fish man from Belgium. He's caught some monstrous carp in his homeland. A chocolate maker by trade. Will his big fish experience allow him to put in a mouth-watering display? And finally, Mario Gable striking young underwear model from Belgium with an angling family history to be proud of. At home behind any good waffle machinery, he's also been known to grace European carp lakes, leaving destruction in his wake. Next up, the German. Firstly, the captain, Etienne Gable. This man lives and breathes carp fishing. A bait fanatic that loves nothing more than spending Saturday nights in making boilies. Will he experience the fruits of his labour? And then, Jens Bunsen, an angling writer and quite frankly, a massive beer drinker. Will the carp run him a merry dance or will he be toasting to victory? And finally, Carsten Schellenberg, the Peter Crouch lookalike. Will he be dancing for joy if he catches a whacker? He's a sausage making specialist, continuing a proud family legacy in Germany. What plan does he have to banger and smash Gigantica? And now, Team England. Firstly, the captain. He's no stranger to thinking tackle. Danny Fairbrass, a former British champion. England will be needing every element of his competitive streak to win. Dan loves scuba diving in his spare time. Will we see him smiling or ripped up in the jaws of the opposition? Next up, Ian McMillan. With more chins than a Chinese phone book, Ian spends most of his time on a treadmill. Having lost a load of weight, Ting Tong is fighting fit. Will the competition wave the white flag and will they face a Macmillan mauling? And finally, Tom Dove. The Dove from above was a carp in a former life, an avid stamp collector and locksmith. But is he the key to England's success? We've taken you through the teams. Now it's time to talk you through the draw format and exactly how it works. Quite simple, really. The lake's been split up into three key areas. Areas one, two and three, spread around the venue, okay? So what that does, it gives everyone a share of the spoils. Ben Lux, first out of the hat, and rightly so, Mr. Iron, the captain, put himself in the tree line. They've got area two, so they've got areas spread around the venue, but that is a real favorite area for the carp. They're moving up and down this tree line all the time, and if anyone out their team could put in a match winning performance, it'd have to be Iron. Next, the Germans. Etienne, their captain, pulled out number one. He's got pole position. This swim has produced the biggest carp this year and only last week the giant, the king of the lake, was caught from this very swim at 72 pounds, slightly down in weight, but in a couple of weeks that fish could be well over 75 pounds again. So every chance for a big one coming out of pole position. And finally, 
Team England, Danny Fairbrass has called rank. He's picked one of his favourite areas on the lake, Alcatraz. Only last year he hooked a carp that he described as the biggest he's ever hooked. He lost it, unfortunately. Moving on to poor old Ting Tong in the big southerly. He got the short straw, put in that corner, really not been producing a lot of fish. But if anyone could get a rabbit out of the hat, it could be Ting Tong. And then the cub of the lions, Tom Dove in Big Girls, a bay that has produced some big fish. But there we go. The guys are in their swims, and this, the Gigantica European Cup, is what they're all angling for. The draw format has been done, and we are with Free Lions Captain Fantastic, Danny Fairbrass. Danny, are you happy with the swim formation? Absolutely, mate, yeah. yeah. I mean, they were all pretty fair, to be honest. We would have been happy with any of them. I'm particularly happy with this swim because I've fished it a few times before. So, uh, you know, I've, I sort myself right out, basically. How have you positioned the boys in your team? Uh, well, Tom really fancied um, big girls over the other side there. And, uh, and so did Tong as well. So I let them fight it out and basically snuck in and pick this one in between. Yeah, so Mr. Tong seems like he's got the short straw. Tom, uh, always been known for liking big girls. Are you confident <laughs> where you are? Yeah, very confident, mate. I've, like I say, I've fished this swim a few times before. I know the areas where I need to be fishing. and It suits my style of fishing as well. Six nights is a long time, so, uh, you know, I'm sure we'll get a couple. Are you fearful of the competition? Um, that's a tough one, mate. I've really, have, I've not seen them fish, so I don't know, you know. But um, yeah, you got, you got to treat everybody with respect, you know. And we'll just see how things pan out. They're all underdogs. England must be favourites. What if you don't win? I'll be gutted, mate. To be perfectly honest, I'm so competitive anyway. So I'll be trying my art out just the same as the rest of the boys. But yeah, there might be a few tears at the end. Right, well, let's get round to see the other competitors. Next stop, the Germans. We are with the German captain, Etienne Gable, a.k.a. the Gable Man. Etienne, is it the first time you fish the lake? No, uh, the third time. I've been here in 2006 and 2007. I've been here, but uh, I've got nothing. <laughs> no so, catches. So no track record on here. How confident are you of producing a match-winning performance? I've never done a match before. It's my first match fishing, let us say, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm confident. Yeah, I'm confident because uh, of, I've, I've got good food with me and uh, I've got good bait with me and uh, I'm trying to do my best. You've got two other team members. How confident are you against competing with the top English team? Yeah, <laughs> the two other guys uh, from uh, the German team, have, has, uh, they have uh, never been uh, fished a match before. They are confident because they are really good anglers in Germany. They are um, a little bit boily anglers, not really spot, spotting anglers, but uh, I'm, I think they are doing their best. <laughs> now Etienne, Giganticus famed for giant carp. Now if someone offered you one big fish, okay, and no match win, or they said you win the match and no 70 pound fish, which one would you take? We are trying to win the match. <laughs> so you, tur you turn down a 70 pounder for a match win? Yes. Right, well, <laughs> That's a very confident German. Let's go and see the Dutch. We are with Captain of Benelux, Ian Aberger. Ian, what a lovely swim you've got here. Tree line, it's very English lake looking. Are you confident in here? Yes, for sure. I think it's one of the better swims of the lake. It's, it's a reasonable casting distance for me. I did it in the past. I'll try to move some, uh, some food around the edges. Hopefully the carp will move around. And I think, yeah, good chance to catch a couple of fish. You're a big man from Holland. You've got two guys from Belgium. You're competing against some very good anglers here. Are you confident that you can beat them? Yeah, of course, we're going to beat the English and the Germans. <laughs> well, I know you hate the Germans, but beating the English would be a big thing. I mean, they're renowned for being the leaders in carp angling, if you like. Would it be a real big achievement for you to beat them? Uh, of course, it's always nice to win, but it's not a very big thing. It's, it's a bit of, yeah, it depends on every lake, how you fish and how it goes, but of course, it's nice to win. Do you think you've got some match-winning methods with you? Of course, yeah. Well, a confident iron. Let's move on around the lake and meet some more of the guys. The draw has been done and Captain Fairbrass has called rank. We're with Ting Tong, where you've been striped up, my friend. What swim are you in? Uh, Big Sudley, this is called cool, Al. Very confident because it's not done official, yeah? <laughs> so I have been proper tucked up by uh, the Dubster and Fairbrass. Now, you're a big, strong lad. How did that happen? Well, I didn't flex me, my old stoke muscle, did I? I should have been a bit more forceful in the draw and man, you know, told him who's boss. You're tired, you've just landed from a long holiday. Are you confident in this swim or not at all? D d no. <laughs> no, seriously, we've seen a few fish. Um, if they're here to be caught, cool, I'll catch them. Spread a few boilers about, you know, get them rooting about for food. Uh, yeah, I'll catch them. If they're here, I'll catch them. 
There's some very big carp in this lake, and this swim has produced some big fish in the past. Are you confident in how you're going to approach it? Yeah, 100%. I fished here in November, uh, and I spotted, and I'm convinced that a lot of the bait gets eaten by the small fish on the way down. So I've come with 20 mil boilies, scat them about, they can't eat down the roach, um, and just kind of fish for one bite at a time. If I catch one big in all week, I'll be happy. But could you produce a hero's performance and catch more than anyone from this swim? As long as I beat Fairbrass, that's all I'm worried about. <laughs> well, it's competition within a competition. We'll be back to Tong soon. Thinking Tackle, sponsored by Dower Infinity. As the morning mist evaporates from the surface film, this Ting Tong lion has roared England into the lead. <laughs> Ting Tong, how big? 16, 12, mate, yeah. What a stunning carp. One of the babies of Gigantic. Well, in a match, mate, they all count. They do all count. And exactly how have you winkled this one out, sir? Um, 80, no, 20 mil cell bottom bait, uh, tipped with a bit of plastic. Um, probably about 30 yards. I had three bites as it goes, despite being putting the duffer by Fairbrass. So, uh, we did bit of revenge. We did discuss that there was a chance that you could produce some magic out of this swim, mm. and it seems like you've got off to a fly, mate. Are you confident of more bites? Uh, yeah, but I just hope they don't come all in the middle of the night. Well, with the eventful night's action, do you think you've started to scare some of the field? <laughs> mate, Team England, they should be scared, you know it, you know? They're on their toes. <laughs> on their toes they are. Ting Tong storms England into a 16 pound, 12 ounce lead. I believe Ben Lux are just over 12 pounds. No sooner have we left Ting Tong, who put England in the lead, but the Iron Man has stormed Ben Lux into the lead with this stunning 34 pound Gigantica mirror. What a stunning carp. Iron, how have you caught it? I caught it uh, near the trees with a, with a dumbbell with a plastic uh, piece of corn above it. In the morning, quite a hard take, quite a strong fish. Put some bait around it in the evening and it went off. I believe it wasn't your only fish because you had a smaller one earlier in the trip. Yeah, that's true. I had a smaller one at 10 o'clock in the evening, about six kilos or something. Short after it, I had another fish, but I lost it. The hook pulled out, unfortunately. So a great start, a really, really good start. Are you confident of more bites from this swim? Yeah, for sure. If you look at the wind and the circumstances, we'll get more takes out of this swim. A stunning carp and a fine start for Ben Lux. We're going to catch up with Ryan and look at his rigs in a bit more detail. Now, most people think that Dutch anglers use really big hooks, horrible rigs, but what you've got here, mate, ain't strictly true. I can see quite a nice, delicate presentation that, well, I'd cast it out myself. So, Iron, you just caught a massive carp on this, a mid-30. Talk me through the rig. Yeah, it's, it's not the most difficult rig, but it's, it's just a hybrid soft with a, a dumbbell hook bait with a piece of corn above it, blowback rig with a, with a ring on the, on the hook, curve shank hook, size 6, a bit of uh, shrink tube above it, and then a piece of, of super, super stuff, and then the, 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 normal, main. Yeah, the main part. So exactly how do you tie the rig up? What's the first thing you do? First I make a loop. When I've made the loop, I put on the, the dumbbell. Then I do the, do the piece of corn on it. The little corn stop, that's a, that's a nice little gizmo there, isn't it? Gives you a little fleck of colour as well. Yeah, of course, sometimes I put a bit of flavour over it for extra bit of smell. Yeah? Yeah, and then I put uh, the, the, the oval ring on okay. it. Okay, is, is that just a little loop, just a simple overhand yeah, knot yeah, to that? Yeah. Okay. If I want, I can change the distance if I want, that I can put it a bit more down or... or yeah, adjust it. So what you're saying is, depending on what hook bait you're yeah, using, you course. can... Have it coming yeah. off the bend of the hook, yeah. Yeah. level with the point. Yep, okay, yeah, yeah. really important that is. You're right, and then I put, uh, put the hook through the ring. Yep. Make a knotless loop, uh, knot, just yep. a normal one. Yep, and then four I, or five turns, yep. Yeah, or if, normally I do five or six, but yeah, four okay. or five is also yep. fine. And then I put one and a half centimeter of shrink tube about over the, over the hook. Okay. And then I look if the, if the distance between the, the supo and the, and the stiffer part is a bit bit okay. So you like about, what I can see is about an inch of yeah. supple before yeah. the stiff coating yeah. starts, yeah. okay? That's right. And then moving up the hook link? Yeah, and then I put the link loop on it. I like to fish with link loops, they're great. Okay, and that, and that leads me on nicely to your um, your lead system because yeah. that link loop allows you to, well, this is uh, our very own Danny's favourite setup, isn't it? Yeah, so, it is. So here we've got a stick clip. Yeah. There. And that, what I presume all you've done there is just close down the front of the leg clip, yeah. so it squeezes over it, so it's semi-fixed. Yeah, yep. that's true. So as a fish shakes its head, bang, that slides away. Yeah, 
And, okay. and before I put a, a rubber rubber stop on the first or the second part of the rig, okay. but I don't do that anymore. I think it's better when it can go off. It's safer. Yeah, yeah it's very important. I mean, in the case of a, a lost fish, that 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 whole system yeah. can slide off the leader. Yeah, for yep. sure. Okay, excellent. Let's go on to your baits as well. I know I've seen a round one on this rig as yeah. well, so I can see there's a bit of variety here. Yeah. We've got these dumbbells that are obviously catching you these lovely carp. What what's in them? It's, it's a, it's a fish-based mix. There's some shrimp in it and some hot stuff to give the, give the traction. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's a shame that I can, cannot smell Can't it. Can't smell it. Yeah, well, if some of them put their nose up to the speaker, they might be able to smell <laughs> it. Yeah. Yeah, it's lovely. Very spicy. Really, really. Yeah, yeah. Fish love spice, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they do. Yeah, of course. Okay. And what I did on the swim, I, uh, when we arrived, I put a couple of kilos of all sizes of boys along the trees. Okay, I like can the, see that. So yeah. we've got some 10 mil, some 14 mil, you've got these dumbbells. Yeah. So what's the thinking behind that? I want to get the fish, let them feed all kinds of uh, varieties, all kinds of sizes, and they, that they stay feeding and they find some different things everywhere. Do you think that confuses the fish? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Is that important in your fishing? I mean, when you're boily fishing, do you, do you find that you catch more when you're applying different sizes of bait? It's all, if you do something else than the rest, not a lot of people are doing a lot, mixing a lot of uh, boilies uh, through each other. But for here, now the fish is in the corner, and it, I, yeah, it's quite easy, I think, to, to catch them, but it's always something that you can get a, a couple of more takes. Maybe the little extra gem that yeah, you need. That's it. Well, it looks like you've got a master plan. The wind's trickling in here, he's catching fish. If he keeps going like this, England and Germany could just be trailing for the remainder of the match. We've just seen the Iron Man's rig, and no sooner have we done that, and he's just bagged another one. 15 pound, two ounces. This puts you over 60 pounds, building a lead on second. Is the confidence growing? Yeah, very much. Nice fish, strong one again. Wind's is blowing into the corner. More fish will move in, I think. Are you confident of catching more? Yeah, sure. Yeah. sure. <laughs> well, it's a great start, a flying start. If you can keep this going, the free lions might be weeping. The lions are roaring. Captain Fairbrass is into his first fish of the tournament. Here he goes. Is it feeling good, mate? Don't say that. Don't ask yeah. me that. Yeah, it does. It does actually. It feels like a nice fish. But in this deep water, they all do. To be honest, completely out of the blue. What is it? Quarter to ten to one. Wouldn't have expected. It looks really good though, with the wind blowing in here. I put, I put a little bit more bait in about two hours ago because it hadn't happened this morning. I felt I needed to get some grub out there just to uh, try and entice them in. There's been a lot of fish showing out longer than where I'm fishing. I'm fishing under my rod tips for me, about 80. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nearly touched that rock then with the line. Well, we've seen how the team Ben Lux were in the lead, but we'll see how close this one gets him. This clear water is absolutely ideal for seeing the fish. When they're getting close, you see them turn, and some of the beasts that are in here will look absolutely monstrous under the rod pit. The nerves will be jangling now. I don't think you can see the legs shaking, but they really are on the inside, I can tell you. A bit of peace and tranquility while he plays the carp. He goes. He said, oh no! Oh mate! There are no words. Unbelievably, late in the evening of day two, Schaefer Brass is into a carp. And even more unbelievable, there's a German angler stood next to him with the net. Never seen this in a sporting event. An Englishman and a German working together, very rare. Mr. Fairbrass, how are we feeling? Uh, I'm not allowed to swear, so I'm not going to tell you exactly, but um, I really want this one to go in the net after losing one earlier on today. Um, we were just about to have a chat and say how good it looked. And uh, I've resisted the temptation to put more bait in and uh, the right hand rod's roared off. Changed the um, hooking arrangement round. Come off the... Uh, the short shank straight pointed hooks and uh, gone on to curved pointed hooks and hopefully this means it's going to stay on. You've not had a single bite. What's going on, mate? 
I don't know what's really going on at the moment, but I think uh, our food will work in the, few, in the next few days, and uh, I'm very proud to get the first one in the net. <laughs> are, you, are you really? Are, do you really want him to get it in the net? Have you got hold of that net to bump it off, or are you really <laughs> yeah, going to try no, to get it in? No, I try to get it in. <laughs> All right, well you better do because yeah. you know if you don't, there will be hell to pay, won't there? Is, everything is locked here. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get it in. <laughs> How about that? 25, what was it? And a half. 25 <laughs> and a half. So that puts us a little bit closer to the Benelux and hopefully I'll be netting a fish for my old mate a bit later on this evening. Cheers, pal. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Wicked. That beautiful 25 pound common is safely back in the water where it belongs. Dan's got his rig back in. How are you feeling, sir? Uh, extremely confident, mate. I've just seen a proper big one at the back of the spot. The sun like, was shining out on the lake and it hit his cheek. It just looked massive. So uh, if I get him tonight, I'll be well pleased. Well, I don't expect you'll be doing much sleeping, but someone I do expect to be sleeping <laughs> is this rather <laughs> slow starting German team. What's going on? At the moment, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I stay, uh, we stay confident, absolutely, because uh, we have a good uh, tactic, I think. It takes one or, or two days more and uh, then we're going to catch. Well, it's certainly taken a long time. Could it be ineffective? Could these tactics prove to fall you foul? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it could. Well, they could let you down. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. It works. Believe me, it works. Now, I have written off Germans a lot of times. I've watched them in football matches when I thought there is no chance they're going to win and they've come back and stole victory. Now, Etienne, if I was to offer you a big one, yeah, and no victory, would you take it between me and you? <laughs> victory. <laughs> victory all the yeah. way. Yeah, victory. Absolutely. Right, back to you, Dan. Yeah. Competition's hotting up. Mm. It's quite tight at the moment. Yep. Do you expect it to stay that way right to the end? Yeah, do you know what? I think as the week goes on, it's always this way on these kind of lakes. As the week goes on, it gets better and better and better. The fish get used to the food being there. And uh, it's anyone's game, mate. It is anyone's game. But we will be trying our hearts out. Come on, England. Well, these guys have rung the dinner bell. Will the monster carp of Gigantica respond? As the evening of day two draws to a close, the action is hotting up. I'm getting excited. I think the fish might be getting excited. But before I do that, I'm going to talk to this big man behind me, my good friend Danny Turley, who in fact has lived here for over nine months. He's been living, breathing, smelling this venue. If anyone knows everything about it, it's this man. Danny, firstly, before we go and talk about the fishing and what could happen, you've done a lot of work here and a great job you've done. Thank you. Yeah, we've done a real lot of work this winter. Redeveloped the whole lake, new swims, landscaped a lot of the ugly scenery, removed some of the, the more dodgy swims. Now the swims are really accessible, good for the bivvies, comfortable. Now let's get down to the nitty gritty. When you've been doing that work, you've been walking around this venue, you've been seeing everything, you've been living and breathing it like I've just said. You've sleet, snow, you've been here in every single condition. Have you seen any whackers on your travels? I have, yeah, I've seen quite a few to be honest. Um, we've got quite a few snaggy areas where we watch fish constantly. Big fish, we're talking like 50 pound, 25 kilo pluses. Um, really to larger sizes, 35 kilos. Um, and just recently, obviously, as you know, we've just had a, a 72 pound fish on the bank uh, to our, for a bloke who won a competition in a fishing magazine, actually. Now, I believe there's a little bit of a funny story behind that because um, the, I heard the guy had, uh, had a problem with his arm. Can yeah. you explain a bit more? Yeah, we'd had an heart attack a few years ago and uh, he had an issue with his arm. He's got like a wasting disease and he can't hold any weight. So uh, he asked me to hold the fish up for the photos. I ducked down out of the way, which was uh, quite a feat in itself. And uh, Ray got in the back and we got some really good photos for him. He was really happy with it. The fish known as the giant and, and it really is a giant, isn't it? It's a huge, huge fish. 70 pound, 72 pounds, spawned out. Um, expect this fish to be 80 pounds later on in the year. Well, let's hope we get a chance to look, you know, at some more of the fish and hopefully some more get caught during the yeah. competition. But let's talk a bit about the competition. It's hotting up. Yeah. Team Benelux are in the lead. Danny's chasing them. Now, with the conditions of the, as they are, what do you expect to happen? Well, I've recently checked the weather. Uh, the conditions are going to stay pretty much the same with a predominantly northerly based winds. Um, the German guy, Etienne, and Danny are in the prime positions. 
Pole position and Alcatraz, I believe. Yes. Now, pole position's got some great big fish form. Would you be surprised if it produced a whacker? I, I would not be surprised within the next 48 hours that it again has uh, possibly a 25 kilo fish. Real big fish. Now, looking further afield, you know, Dan and Etienne out of the equation, if you were to back a winning team, based on the swims they've got, who would it be? On form, you've got to go with a fair brass. He's fishing a, a swim he's fished in the past. He knows the lake like the back of his hand. He's got the winning rigs. The weather's in his condition. I think the only slip up that may happen, Etienne and a bag of real big fish. Real big fish. And that's the thing with this venue. Let's say, for example, you've got iron, he's trickling away, catching you know, smaller fish, he's at a nice mid 30, yeah. but it only takes one absolute monster yeah. and you go from being nowhere to everywhere. Yeah, certainly. 25, 27 kilo fish, you're almost way out in front, maybe even un unsurpassable. Well, you heard it from the man first. The match is wide open, but a big fish could change everything. Thinking Tackle, sponsored by Dower Infinity. It's been a barnstorming night of action, but the poor old Germans, they've done what they do best, a bit of sleeping. Poor old Ben Lux, they're in the free lion's wake, but England are rampaging through the field. Next stop, McMillan. Big games need big game players, and Mushy has pulled something out of the bag. How big is it, my friend? 24 and a half, mate, this one. Now, after the problem of the swim and getting somewhere you didn't quite fancy, you seem to be pulling it out of the bag night after night. Are you confident you can keep doing it? I'm, I'm getting, uh, the confidence is rising, shall we say. The showing at night, uh, not as many as the night before, but this again was from the snaggy area, which it's a bit airy fishing, quite a lot of tree stumps, I think, to the left. Uh, but I hear some good fish, and I'm really liking them having it with the bait. So um, if, they, if they move in again, like the first night, I think I'll get a few more bites, but it was a lot quieter last night than, than the previous one, you know? Do you expect the action to continue going on the area and what you're seeing? Do you think they might still be coming in here in dribs De and drabs? Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm more happy. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy here now. I've got a lot of water. I've got my own little bay that I can work the area and keep the bait going in. So that if they want to come in for a munch, you know, I'm confident of catching a few more. I think I'll catch more, but it seems pretty lifeless in the day. You know, I think they push out in the day and then drift back into this little bay uh, in the evening. Like so. So yeah, I'm confident of more bites. 100 percent. Yeah. Excellent. Well. Ting Tong's producing it, and word on the street is that Captain Fairbrass has put in a captain's performance. Well, this is the start of a productive night's work. 19 and a half pounds, just as it was getting dark. Um, and I had two more during the night, a 19 and a quarter, and a 14 and a half. The rods roared off at almost exactly the same time, so I had to play one as quickly as I could, while the other rod was still roaring off under my feet. I picked that one up and fortunately stayed on as well. So hopefully that has pushed us into a convincing lead and it still looks very, very good for another one. Fairbrass and Macmillan have got their feet firmly on the pedal and England are accelerating into the lead and there's activity in the lion's den. Now then, Danny boy, it was an eventful night. People will be wondering exactly what you're feeding them with. <laughs> uh, lots of munga, mate. Um, it's changing depending on the time of day, to be honest. I, I came to Spod, but I also brought boilies with me, so I could use the throwing stick if I wanted to, but my intention was to Spod. But on the first day, I was racing against the daylight, and uh, I wanted to get a lot of bait out quickly, and I was, I was able to do that with a stick easier than I was with the Spod. A so, stick? Y yes, mate, a stick. A very rare sight. Have you been touched by the hand of God? Uh, I've been touched by the hand of Adam Penning, actually, um, from a couple of shows ago. Um, we went to Sky, caught a load of fish using the throwing stick. I had to change to the throwing stick to catch. The last show we did, back in the UK, I used the throwing stick to good effect. And um, it just lends itself, this swim, because it's a big open swim, you can spray boilies absolutely everywhere. But one little trick I am doing, in the daytime, rather than trying to put the marker float back out again and use it as a target, I'm spotting and then leaving the spot out on the surface and then f use, using the spot as a target and putting the baits out with the throwing stick then. So you're not having to put something in the swim on the bottom, it's just laying on the surface. It gives you an idea of the distance and then spray a load more baits. So I'm going to get this in and uh, 
cast it out again and I'm gonna get some boilers in mate if you don't mind because yesterday I got a bite about now so I'm a little bit late but to be honest I crashed out this morning I hit the wall and had to have a couple of hours kip so um, the weather looks brilliant for a bite during the day so do you think that's old age catching up with you mate <sighs> mate I think it is old age to be honest um, and bearing in mind I've now put in well over 10 kilo boilies with a throwing stick over a couple of days that's a lot of boiling and it does take it out of you So exactly how much bait are you giving them then, each day? Um, well, I started off with three key. Excuse me, mate, just get that stick. Um, just because, you know, that's all I could get out before it got dark, really. And then um, I'm putting out probably another kilo every time that I get a bite. You see that out there? Yeah, it's a lovely sight marker. Yeah. Um, just means there's nothing on the bottom, you know, to scare the fish away. So I can carry on fishing and hopefully get a bite and one of the bites I had last night came within 15 minutes of putting a whole a kilo out and in this depth of water 20 foot of water you can bait up on their heads as, as long as you're careful and uh, they, you know when they're feeding they probably don't even know you're doing it so not even disturbing but, no no and that's the key you know on these sort of things I think that's why some of the other teams are not catching and we are me and Tong have really got the bait going out in the right frequency and at the right time of day. No. That's very important, that is. It's a, it's a matchman's tactic, Dan, isn't it? You, you're not going out and piling it all in in one go. You're doing it little and often. Do you think that's critical? Uh, absolutely, mate, absolutely. It's one, one of the major mistakes that people make on these sort of holiday venues is they bait up at the wrong time of day. So they get up, you know, have a wee in the bushes, as we always do, and then... Uh, <laughs> and then get the bucket out and start spotting right at the time when the fish are really heavily feeding first light the first couple of hours the worst time to bait up so, um, so the top tip is there you know leave those early mornings free let the fish come in and hopefully enjoy a bit of tuck yeah and then when it comes to lunchtime, that's the time to put some food in especially when it looks like this you've got the wind in your face it look, doesn't look any better in this swim and uh now's the time to get a bit in i've not had a bite for a few hours um, you know, you need to activate the swim again by putting more bait out. So pick your times and uh, put the right amount in at the right time and you'll catch a lot more fish. Well, it's certainly working for Danny Boy. We'll leave him, let him carry on getting some more bait out and then we'll catch up with him, hopefully, with another carp. Well, they say there's proof in the pudding and there's the pudding right in front of you. Exactly what he said, a little bit of bait out in the swim, topping it up and action a few minutes later. Well, Dan, you talked to us about baiting up and uh, a bite a few minutes later. How does it feel? It feels like a good fish, actually, mate. The, uh, the old line singing in the wind, that normally means there's a load of pressure on it and you can sort of just feel the way it's fighting. It's not charging around as much. But like all of them, it's really banging its head. You just feel like every single one's going to come off. Um, they just don't get caught that much, you know? And they're just so wild. The <laughs> huh? I'm trying to mind the rod just in case it's right. in the head. <laughs> Are you feeling as nervous as you did yesterday playing yeah, them? Yeah, I am actually, yeah. yeah. I had a funny occurrence this morning uh, where I, I don't know if it was a bite and it wasn't there when I picked, you know, when I picked the rod up it just came off or what, but the four I had after losing that fish, four in a row, were all perfectly hooked. Um, and then you have a funny occurrence and then you think, oh God, is it going to happen again, you know? And especially in a match fishing situation, Oh, they all banging count, his, but look they? how much he's banging his yeah, head. See yeah. the tip of the rod. Unbelievable, yeah. mate. Right. It's only a babby, isn't it? Yeah, I don't want to tempt fate though. It looks like the uh, the hook's plumb in the bottom lip, mate. So I'm not gonna take any chances. No. This will open up quite a convincing lead. Is the confidence building with every minute? Uh, it is now, mate. But I mean, I've, I've just ended up in the plum swim. I've got the wind pushing bang into my face. You know, I'm getting bites in the middle of the day. It's, it's all working as well as it can work now. And uh, we've got to wind in in a minute, which I don't want to do. But um, we're going to go and have some lunch. And uh, I'm going to get plenty of bait out before I go up there. Well, I think you're doing yourself a disservice because you're doing the right things at the right time. Get in the net. Yes, <laughs> come on. Another one on the score sheet. Okay. And there he is, 18 and a half pounds of Gigantica Common Carp. Not a giant, but still points on the board all the same. 
and most importantly, proof of the pudding that the baiting situation is really working now. Thinking Tackle, sponsored by Dower Infinity. Well, no sooner as Danny Fairbrass finishes dinner, he's got his rods back out and they're away. And this one seems like a good fish. Am I right in saying that, Dan? Yeah, mate, it, does. it feels like a much, much bigger fish. It's felt big all the way in. It's just come up the shelf and gone absolutely ballistic. Um, I wouldn't say it's a monster, but it ain't a 19 pounder. And as always, uh, my legs are shaking. Right, well, I'm gonna get down here. Yeah, you get down way. there, mate, and uh, get ready for netting. I might even get my feet wet for you, mate. It really feels like big fish weather, doesn't it? With this wind, it just all seems so right. Yeah, mate. Look at him go, look. Hear that on the clutch. Just as soon as I get him up the shelf. I'm guessing it's a long, lean 30-pounder. Just be careful what he's in the edge. Yeah, it's a real long one. You can see it out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See it out there. It's like a hammerhead, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, interestingly enough, this is the first rod I've tipped the um, the bottom bait off with a pineapple pop-up. First time I've done it in the session, and uh, it may just be that it's in the middle of the bait. Yep. But we uh, put quite a lot, me and Ting Tong, put quite a lot of bait out here before. Um, before we went for dinner, probably about 50 cricket balls of Vitalin and monkey sick and, uh, and boily, plus a load of boilies as well. And I thought, to be honest with you, I'd get problems with a bream, but uh, obviously this, this is not the case at the moment. Look at him go in, the, in that clear water. Okay, baby, get in the net. Doesn't like the look of that net. It's all right, Ali, I can get him, I can get him in there. Get in. How about that? Just over 21 pounds, more points on the scoreboard, and most of all, very quickly after putting more bait out. So I'm very confident going into the third night of getting more action, and uh, hopefully it's gonna be a big one. Well, it's the morning of day four, and it's the time to have a round up with the teams and find out exactly how they're feeling. First up, the guys in second, Ben Lux. It's been a quiet couple of days from now, but out of nowhere, a bite has arrived. Firstly, the captain, Iron. Iron, surprised to catch this one? Yeah, after a couple of, yeah, two nights without fish, yeah. The wind's very good, and we were waiting for fish, and finally there's another coming. Have you, uh, have you been seeing fish in the area, or was this just a bite out of the blue? There's a lot of fish into the snacks, but it, look, it seems to be if it's really difficult to get them out. They're feeding into the snacks if you feed them over there, but just a couple of meters outside the snacks, it's impossible to catch them. We're now fishing really under the snacks, and maybe that's going to make the difference. Do you think if, if you could get them fish feeding and get them out of them snags, do you think there's a chance of catching England? Yeah, of course. The, the difference is 100 pounds or something, but it's still something to catch up. And there are maybe 20 or 25 fish in the snacks, and if they come out and catch a couple, we're, we're with them. Of course, yeah. of course. Mario, you're not far away, but to win this match, I think you need more than one person to catch. Yeah. Are you confident of anything where you are? Mm, not so confident because uh, we have uh, three days this wind, and uh, me and Bart, we catch uh, nothing. Uh, we are pre-baiting, maybe uh, that will work, but I don't know. I hope it's going to be a uh, rain because we're fishing uh, up depth. Maybe they go into the ground to uh, feed themselves. So hopefully the rain will push the bigger fish yeah, down into down. the deeper water. Yeah. Because Mate. if you want to win, you must uh, catch all three. Of course, of course. Okay then, Bart, you're on that far bank where um, only Macmillan's caught in the corner in the bay. Are you confident of any action? No, I, I see fish jumping, but I can't catch them. I think they, they're just on the surface, but I'm pre-baiting. Hopefully they go down when, when, the weather, when the weather is changing. A little bit other wind, a little bit more rain. Have you been applying a lot of bait? No, not, not enough. 
And uh, finally, a question to all of you, um, the teams, how do you feel about the other guys out there? Do, do you think England are running away with it or are you still confident, really genuinely confident of catching them? Uh, England is uh, on, uh, they got uh, a constant fish there, uh, so it's going to be hard. I think it's going to be hard. But we come back. <laughs> the next 24 hours will be very important, I think. Yeah, yeah because then you've, you're only leaving with yeah. two nights after that. It's going to be, it's going to be tricky. Yeah. Well, there you go. Ben Lux, think they're still in the mix. Let's go and look at the poor old Germans. <laughs> Stand to attention for the Germans. Gentlemen, the machine, the German machine, currently is not rocking. One other question before I get into the fishing. You were putting out a few balls of ground bait. How many did you put out? 66. <laughs> <laughs> Not really 66, no. Right. Round about 30. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. On to the fishing, gentlemen. A little bit slow. Did you come here optimistic and hoping to win? Yes, we came here to, uh, to try everything what we can do. But uh, at the moment it uh, doesn't work, as you see. But we stay on, we stay on the food and we don't give up. We have a saying in England, having something left in your locker. Do you think you've got anything left in your locker? No, not at the moment. <laughs> the, the, match, the, the match is not over. So we have uh, three nights and I think, yeah, I think we catch some carp and hopefully the biggest one. Carsten, <laughs> you are in a, a, a difficult area, not a lot of fish there. Would you like one big fish or yeah. maybe victory? A one big fish. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like, and a, a guy who knows what he wants. Going on now, gentlemen, what, what do you think you need to turn this match around? Do you think you need one big fish to give you the confidence, or do you think you need a volume of fish just to start knocking on the leaderboard? We need a volume of fish because uh, then we, we know what's happening on the bottom. We put a, a lot of bait out now because the other guys. Uh, they have put a lot of bait out and they were successful. So uh, we put now also a little bit uh, more bait out and uh, hope, to tr uh, hope to get some uh, fish. Okay, yeah. um, there's three of you, three swims. Which swim do you think, if any of them, could produce a winning catch for you? Uh, first of all, I think the tree line is the best swim. There are many, many carps under the trees. And I, yeah, at, we, we arrived at Sunday so we see many, many carps, they're under the trees and the Dutch guy catch some there. Yeah, so, I mean, you're, you're next door to yes. Iron. Um, do you think it, there's any chance them fish could come over and, uh, and, and meet your rods? Hopefully the, the, weather, the weather is a little bit changing and then I think the fishes are coming out of the trees and then they are coming on my spot. Now, the thought of losing to England Maybe you can cope with that because they're a long way ahead. But to lose to your bitter rivals from Holland and Belgium, Ben Lux, would that be painful? Yes, <laughs> it would be painful, yeah. So if I offered you second place now, would you take it? No. No. Only first? Yes. Well, there we go. <laughs> Fighting talk from the Germans. The machine rolls on. Can they produce something? Well, we've just left the Germans who are putting on brave faces, but right here I'm joined by three wise men, or should I say lions, that are roaring in front. Firstly, the captain, Dan, a commanding lead. Do you think you can keep building on it? Absolutely, mate. I mean, look at the weather. It looks perfect for this swim. Um, I'm expecting one. Oh, I got a bite two minutes ago yesterday, so I'm expecting more action, if not now, after dinner. I'm sure Mr. Tong as well is going to is going to get more action. He's fishing out of his own skin, and uh, we're going to put flick the switch on this one's back <laughs> tonight, and then he's going to start. Lion Cub, talking of the switch being flicked on you, yeah. if you could start catching, do you think that will be the nail in the European team's coffins? I, I would like to think so. Yeah, I mean these two are catching all the time, so if I pull my finger out and start catching a couple, I think we'll go too far ahead for them to catch up. Really, you could say pull your bratwurst out, couldn't you? Well, you could do, <laughs> that. Yes, you borrowed yes, off the Germans. Could, yes. <laughs> now, Tong, you are putting in an absolutely worldly display. A swim, no one fancied, and done a bite for 200 years. <laughs> and you've caught, well, you caught quite a few. Yeah, yeah. Confident that a bigger might fall to your landing net? Uh, very much so, yeah. I've heard a lot of big fish to me left in the snaggy area, so uh, they're there, but I'm, I'm really just fishing for a bite at the time. Now, tactically, guys, are you going to change anything? You got any other tricks up your sleeves, or is it just keep going as you are? Um, 
I'm sort of going to keep going as I am, but I still don't think, although I've caught quite a few, that I'm milking it for all it's worth. So it's all about effort, keeping your eyes on the water, seeing what's happening. And I think the frequency of bait going in in front of me is the key, getting it in at the right time, just enough to get a bite and then keep redoing it. So uh, I'm hoping on these on these sort of trips, the end of the week's always better in it than the start of the yeah, week, always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you keep working in an area, I'm praying for a big one as well. Now... Your lead is almost, well, it is double the team in second, Ben Lux. Yeah. Are you actually worried about anyone in the field? And do you think there's any chance of them catching you? Um, I, I'm a little bit worried about Etienne because he said he's only brought two cases of German beer. And I think we've drunk nearly three quarters of it already. That's my only worry, to be honest. Well, there we have it. The Germans are weeping. Ben Lux are hanging on to the Fink Coattails of England. Can anyone catch them? Find out in the next episode of Thinking Tackle. Thinking Tackle, sponsored by Dower Infinity.